member for Parkland, Lake, Loxanne and Parkland. It's okay, Mr. Yeah, or, uh, Mr. Chair. We've been moving around from spot to spot, and I find myself struggling a bit too, being back here and trying to figure out where everyone's sitting. And you're never at your same desk, it seems, these days, so the placemat isn't where it is, and et cetera, et cetera. So, firstly, I want to thank uh, the member from, well, I want to say White Mud. Just want to make sure. For, Given to Whiteman for bringing this forward. I had an opportunity about a year ago at a Diwali festival to actually spend some time with a member of Whitebud, and uh, actually I got a chance to have supper with her mom. So a very lovely lady, please extend my regards to her, and, and was brought into, uh, had the honour actually at that event to actually light the lamps with the, with the priest on stage. It was, it was pretty moving. So there are some genuine things that we do share across the aisle here, despite some of the rhetoric that might be thrown back and forth. Um, myself, I have four kids. My wife is a working professional, and we honestly had to go through the gamut as well. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, through you to some of the members opposite, you up in that cold lake country understand what a 10 and 4 shift looks like when you're the dad away from home, working away, or a 6 and 1 shift, or picking up your little suitcase and you're bouncing across one part of the country to the other and traveling to the States sometimes and over in Europe to try to do what we do in our business. Now, my wife, uh, arguably, she's the, she's the mama bear. She's the rock. She takes care of everything. She has, uh, unfortunately, all the uh, uh, negative impacts of being a, a wife that's married to a husband who works on the road a lot. And she has to carry down her practice and deal with that, plus take care of our kids. So when we were young professionals married and we started our family, we, we kind of got into that with eyes wide open. And we literally, uh, as the minister had so eloquently stated, gone through pretty much every gamut. You know, at first when we had our son, our oldest, uh, my wife was still traveling, commuting up to Athabasca. We lived in Spruce Grove. And uh, her mom actually retired. She's a, a nurse. We actually got her to pull of, uh, retire a couple of years early for us and take care of my son. So that was probably the, one of the best things. I mean, we renumerated her for services and everything else, but that was a contract between family, etc. So with our little guy, we felt pretty safe, and my wife was afforded that luxury and peace of mind of, of commuting, doing her job, taking care of her patients, and then coming back and scooping up the little guy. And then we tried a different model, and this time I was down in your country, actually, out in the SAG-D project out in Cold Lake on the weapons range, and uh, we tried a nanny, you know, because, again, my mother-in-law at that time was wasn't the logistics weren't quite working out for her and this is after a couple of years and we tried a nanny service and that didn't work out for us you know i get this call and <laughs> down in the air weapons range and uh, my wife asking me and I, I stayed out of that 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 was arm's length i provided guidance there was no way i was getting in the middle of that dialogue of selection etc but um, when she advised of some of the circumstances it was uh, my contract terms and i was managing about 99 contracts inside at that time was terminate services. Well, my wife took that quite literal. She had her out and gone and that was done. Like, you don't mess with the mama, mama bear and her cubs. And then we uh, ended up finding another service. We moved up to Athabasca. <clears throat> and with that, with being in an area or community, especially in rural, you, you have to do a lot of, a lot of ground truthing. And um, my wife had the luxury of having patients come in and she literally had that litmus test. She, she was talking to different people and Auntie Pam came up. Well, Auntie Pam came up in a bunch of different areas. Well, now I've, my son and now my daughter at this point, you know, we're moving ahead. That became the second mom, literally. It was another safe, stable place. It wasn't li licensed childcare. It, it didn't fit that licensed model at that time. So Auntie Pam literally scooped us up and we became adopted parents of her as well. It was one of those type of elements. And then once we moved back to uh, the Edmonton area, rolling the shot clock ahead and another child later, uh, we end up out in Onaway, and uh, we went through one home that didn't quite work, which was licensed, didn't quite fit. So again, every time that we've experienced this, and, and again, arguably, I'm at arm's length, but every time you experience this, you test with the community, regardless of where you're going. And we have that luxury, predominantly, with smaller areas, but I would suggest that even the larger urban areas have that, that same ground truth, and that the impetus has to be put on the parents as well. It's not just the government's going to do it all for you. Because again, these are your extensions, they're your children, and you have to be very protective, you have to be very careful, and you have to do that. And it's not with, uh, for the faint of heart just to let your kids be raised by wolves, so to speak. You have to make sure that you're checking this place out. Not only is it the cleanliness, not only is it seeing how the other kids react, it's not only, it's the other parents that are around them. There's a lot of ground truthing that goes in place if you're going to make sure that, that everything's okay. So that other home didn't work out, but then we latched on to another one. 
and this was uh, Celine Tuzin and uh, Yvonne. They were established for a long time, and it took us a while to get into their home. And once we did, that was basically it. So now we have this French-Canadian family that took in our kids and literally scooped them up. I mean, they moved out from Quebec um, probably about 20-some-odd years ago and made their start out west, and they embedded in the community, and we literally had our kids scooped up and just missed those folks to tears. Um, our batch of kids with uh, a few other ones in the home, and they were licensed again, met the capacity, did all those things, and she retired out. And probably the biggest crocodile tears moment was when these nice folks that we met through our day home also kind of adopted us as, as parents, as kind of their de facto kids, because their kids were all back down east in Quebec, as this is their extension of their little family. So again, all the consultations that you've taken, you've gone through this, of understanding that not one size fits all based on our demographics communities. I just cited up four different communities that we bounced around through. Um, my oldest now is 16, and 16, 14, 12, and 10. So we, we went through that, and I'm very happy to say that there was no real issues. There's always a few things that get cross-threaded, but active engagement in parenting did that a long way. Ground truthing, making sure you did those checks, and then the agency checks, of course, because not all agencies are created equal either when you go on the licensing side. There's some hair in that dog too, so again, you have to be really active. But what I've seen brought forward and some of the concerns here, you know, they're valid. They're, they're concerned about sizes. As an MLA, it was uh, pretty shocking. I mean, we get those access to reports and what happens when things don't work in the system and public services and some of the absolute horror stories. So I can see why everyone here is trying to look out for the best sake of the kids and drop the partisanship where most of us are parents here um, and we understand that. So again, I, I really implore your work and your efforts. I, I really do thank the uh, thoughtful dialogue uh, from the member opposite for bringing this sub-amendment forward. Uh, based on the Minister's dialogue, I was jotting down notes here feverishly, obviously, to get up to speed on it, but based on the Minister's um, speech here just recently, I understand that those are covered off, and I understand that if you were to put that specific language, it might actually cause a few pitfalls, and if you've already ran it through your department, then that makes a lot of sense. I do appreciate the member from Calgary Klein of uh, noting a couple gaps and bringing that forward, and I really like it when, dropping the partisanship, we can actually stand up here and do something good for the kids. So appreciate your efforts on this. It does fit. I think it will do a lot for the next generations going forward, and hopefully my kids will inherit the windfall of some good legislation so when I get my little grandkids running around there that it'll mitigate some of those issues, and hopefully for those folks out there that need the choice and the option for affordability, et cetera, this helps provide that. We're not picking winners and losers. We're broadening the base and helping people get back to work with having that comfort and knowing that their kids are protected and safe. So thank you for this.